And with that, I'm going to hand over to Brian Wynn. Thanks, Eric. And I can't echo enough the importance of the components that he talked about with um, ensuring that you've got uh, like the right message spread across the, the the different platforms to ensure you've got a unique and consistent customer experience across the digital ecosystem. Um, and so, uh, you know, as we dive deeply or further a little bit into specifically how we at Wells Fargo think about digital marketing and delivering exceptional omni-channel campaigns, um, spoiler alert, it starts and ends for us with the customer, um, as it should for everyone else. Um, and so on the next slide, I've got um, a bit of a, a content uh, heavy slide here. So I won't read through all of the specific uh, dimensions or components of how we think about um, ensuring that our marketing strategy is connected. Um, but again, focused with, on the customer, these six components of how we define what it, what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it, how will we do it, and the outcome that we expect. Again, um, there is a deep level of, um, you know, intent and purpose, and, and, and we kind of obsess about each of these components um, to ensure that we get a solid customer experience that comes out of a, a new campaign or a new marketing program. Um, but I, I will say that um, within each component, we t always take and tie back to uh, the customer, how we will stand out against our competitors um, and how we will uh, specifically, though, meet the needs and the wants of our customers in um, an authentic and humanistic way. And so the next slide is, um, you know, focusing on our targeted audience. You know, we design um, our target uh, audience um, with a unique perspective of looking at offer differentiation and how will we be relevant from a message perspective and ensuring that we are effective and efficient in reaching consumers in their channel preference. Um, we can design the best product in the world, the best message in the world, um, but looking at that first Chevron, evaluating the scale. And so we do deep analysis on what is the population, what's the demographic of the population, um, what are their financial services, their wants and needs, and can we profitably meet them? Um, and if so, then how do we further define that in terms of uh, their behavioral and psychographic behaviors? And so we layer on, if you will, so some might assert that demographics are dead, but um, they aren't. They essentially kind of give you an outline of your target. And then for a financial services company, it's incredibly important that we identify that first, and, but then um, ensure that we layer on their, their psychographic needs. Um, and then are they, do they have attributes that we, are, we can easily kind of parse out and say, yeah, we can target these um, and we can involve these over time to consistently be relevant and meaningful to our customers. And identifying wants and needs, uh, it's uh, while it appears as though that's kind of a linear step, I think that's an ongoing step because consumers, they go across um, whether they have an interest in a rewards card or cash back card, or maybe they have an interest in a low rate or a balance transfer card. And so different financial needs at different uh, points uh, in, in their lives. And so there is a, a consistent check back in um, leveraging digital insights, um, whether they be insights that we have on consumers from, you know, on us data or even third party data. So we consistently track back to ensure that um, we understand the interest profiles and, and we tie the deep insights into segment behaviors and so that we can accurately target. Um, and then we ensure that our brand is a fit for the customer wants and needs. We don't want to be disingenuous uh, because that will just lead to not needing or delivering on the strategy that we defined and, and, and we won't get the business results that we intended. So brand fit is uh, extremely important in terms of segmentation and how we think about ensuring that the offers that we have and the messaging is the, the right tone and is on kind of target for the audience that we're intending to reach. Uh, and over time, we continuously re redefine, refine attributes just to ensure that, again, that 
over the the you know the life, the consumer's life cycle that we are incredibly relevant to them. Um, and so this slide, this is an example of this is where we I would say we uh, maybe overly obsess on uh, the consumer personas. And so as we break out the segments into different uh, audiences and, and as we think about products and value propositions and offers for consumers and rewards, this is just one example of a persona of a consumer that we've identified that meets more of a, uh, a travel points enthusiast. And so um, this customer persona, this is Olivia Johnson. She's a 37 year old working mother with two small children. She's an IT uh, analyst and she lives in the, in the Northeast in Princeton, New Jersey. And, and from a travel perspective, she's got two family vacations, uh, you know, there's four or, you know, several work related trips. And so there's an opportunity for her to earn loyalty, uh, you know, either at hotel stays or airline stays. And she's got the occasional friends weekend trip as well. And so as we think about her needs from a product perspective, we take her, her profile into super deep consideration. Um, and then from a banking product perspective, she's got a checking account, a debit card, and she's um, a home mortgage customer. So she just happens to be traveling from uh, uh, work to home one day. And she's, you know, after a long day's of work, she's thinking, wow, I really need a vacation. Um, you know, and, and she's hoping to get one planned in the midst of her busy life between, you know, demanding job and demanding home life. And, uh, you know, a, a trip to the Caribbean would be amazing for her, just a, a little bit of a getaway. And she's thinking about ways to, partip, uh, you know, fund that vacation. And one thing that she's aware of kind of high level is that there are rewards cards out there that could enable uh, that travel experience. And so she goes to the Points Guys website. So essentially... Um, and if you go to the, the next slide, Gaurav, you'll see that the, the consumer learning journey, as Eric was alluding to, starts in third-party digital. So, you know, it is in, in incredibly important that we show up and we are relevant in the channels where customers start their shopping journey, where they start to compare and contrast um, us as a card issuer to the competitive landscape that's out there. And so... Um, it is incredibly important that we are where consumers are just starting to learn. So we want to build that broad awareness. And so Olivia visits a third-party website called the Point Sky. And, and many of you may have heard of this popular website. Um, it's where there's lots of content about how to best travel, uh, cards that enable th that travel and the value propositions and how to get the most value out of those cards. And so she stumbles upon our product that's out there, the uh, Wells Fargo Propel card, uh, which she finds very interesting. So she clicks through to get to our landing page to consume more information. Um, but as she's uh, getting to her stop, she kind of stops her learning journey at that point. Um, but she remembers she's, she's got Wells Fargo Propel card in her brain. Um, and so later on, she actually comes to our website remembering that, oh yeah, there was an offer that was, or there's a product that was out there that's interesting to me. Um, and so on the next slide, you'll see how we tie her third party kind of learning experience in that we know that she arrived on our landing page. And so we work to ensure that we are connecting all digital touch points, leveraging uh, available MarTech in the latest and greatest kind of digital analytics tools. And so once we connect that, um, Olivia, or this consumer in particular, not at the one-to-one -one personal perspective, but we've connected that. Uh, we recognize this person has visited our landing page from a third-party site, and now she's within our own channel. Um, but we also have been to do some deeper background work on her as well, being that she's an existing customer. So we connected her third-party kind of learning journey to she's an existing customer, high-value customer, and through... Um, MarTech, whether it be, you know, our DMP and other um, data and insights and modeling that we are able to do, we determine that she is uh, eligible for even a richer premium offer. So we present that to her when she gets to uh, our, our authenticated site. Um, and that is the motivation for her to click through and apply. Engagement starts at new account opening. And so, um, 
you know, the sales cycle isn't completed just because the consumer could, you know, applied and then got approved for our card. It's always about what's that next best action for that customer to take to be further uh, educated and provide deeper levels of awareness into our core card program. So we enable the, an interaction to go to our rewards platform um, so she can immediately begin to learn how do points work for her. Um, and so as we think about an omni-channel marketing campaign, you know, connecting third-party digital to own channel digital, uh, and then carrying that through to uh, early month on book. So like her, her first, in, you know, kind of engagement with us is now learning about rewards, which deeply ties to her original behavior, which is she wants to travel and she wants to leverage um, you know, points rewards to enable that feature. And so we do deep levels of analysis, like I was showing on the previous slide with evaluating the scale and, you know, evaluating the, the wants and needs of consumers to ultimately get to a frictionless customer experience where we take the guesswork out of, um, you know, the customer and provide them with you know, opportunities and, and insights to uh, interact with us based off of their uh, their wants and needs. And so when we look at how we, you know, typically go to market, it's typically with a 360 degree marketing approach, you know, through the Mount Line media strategy, ensuring that we are relevant uh, at different stages of the funnel, whether it be awareness or, you know, driving consumers into consideration and intent, um, ultimately to conversion um, is our, our, our overall goal. And then I just got to have an examples of media platforms that we would typically leverage depending on our overall campaign goals. Um, so, so, some of the channels, it's not all of, we, we know we don't drive like direct accounts in some of the channels, um, you know, paid social is a good example or even programmatic display and addressable TV. But those are channels that are meant to, to ensure that we, we interject ourselves along the way of the consumer journey so that um, consumers aren't just informed of our products. And so by the time they are ready to apply for a card, they have that, oh yeah, there's a product that I saw that's out there from Wells Fargo. And whether they come to our website or whether they go to uh, a, a paid search engine, um, you know, the, they, ha they may have in mind Wells Fargo credit card. It may not be the specific product, but the, the value of being, you know, relevant and present in channels along the consumer journey is um, invaluable actually. And, and I know that this, this funnel looks linear. So, you know, it looks like people, consumers go from awareness to intent um, and consideration to conversion. And that's not always the case. Uh, you know, I think it's more of a loop or a journey. So we ensure that we have an effective media mix to uh, capture where consumers are in their learning journey and uh, ensure that we're, we're always present and relevant along the way. And, and along with that, you know, how do we stand out against the competition? There are some key areas of focus. So again, this is a more of a, a, a very dense, uh, I would say content dense page, but I would just say um, areas of focus for us are the rich value. So ensure, and rich value could be, um, we're on par with certain components of the card program, but, um, you know, in, in more tangible value in areas that consumers can easily identify. And we bring that out in our messaging. We bring that out in the overall application experience so that we stand out. And, and, and again, it's critical for us to have a more uh, connected approach. I think uh, there have been times where we've even ourselves gotten caught up in silos and you know the direct the offline channel thinks about offline and third party digital thinks about third party digital and and own channel teams think about own channel and there is no connected experience and um and so we obsess over connecting the journey just so we appear as one wells fargo to consumers across um, both digital and offline channels. And what that earns us is a superior customer experience, um, optimized investments, which is critical. Um, if they're underperforming digital or offline channels, we look to optimize our mix to where we are driving the 
uh, you, you know, the performance according to our KPIs by each of the channels and more engaged customers. So I, I think that that is ultimately the holy grail is really not just to drive conversions, but ultimately uh, I, I find extreme satisfaction is when consumers get our products and they use them and they're happy with them. And so um, standing out against the competition, these are the areas that we typically focus. And then I would just say in summary, uh, what does it take to deliver exceptional digital marketing campaigns? Um, it, just to ensure that you have a connected marketing strategy centered around the customer, um, avoid the silos uh, as best as possible. Um, I know that many organizations were all you were trained to be sort of entrepreneurs and run our channels like we own them, but we have to have more of a shared model because it's about the enterprise and not just our individual channels. Um, and ensure that um, as you build your, your segments, leveraging demographic and psychographic profile data, that um, you've got, you're ensuring that your brand is the right fit for the target audience and you've got appropriate scales so you um, meet the expected business goals. And standing out against the competition, um, we, uh, again, uh, obsess over that because we know we have not only in industry competition, but the uh, outside of our vertical uh, consumer experience expectations have been set. And so we know we have to have frictionless digital experiences. Um, and the superior experience is actually table stakes. It's not something that we think about as an afterthought. And, and measure and optimize and iterate. If you're not measuring and not marketing, um, and so we look at data and insights to consistently optimize our programs. We, we've gone away from big releases and, um, you know, long-term kind of data and insights and, and then go into big releases to more iterative, always on small insights and, and constantly excelling and, and improving on our marketing and on our customer experience. And what you could expect to do that if you're good and you're lucky is, um, you know, more customers and, and, and more customers who turn into your brand ambassadors.